IRC, the International Relief Corporation, UNESCO, Red Cross, and the Onfam Corporation have all set on their journeys to save the civilians near the explosion of Mount Etna. Stay tuned for more info. Brought to you by Red Cross. Today we're at Science Corner with Jordan Everly. Jordan? Hello Regional News, I'm your host Jordan Everly, and I am a volcanoologist. A volcanoologist is a person who studies volcanoes. And today I will be talking about where a volcano is most prevalent, how it is caused, and where the next volcano is most likely to erupt. Right now I will talk about how it is caused. A volcano is caused when two tectonic plates under the Earth's crust collide together. Then magma is formed. Magma is an orangey substance that is stored in the magma chamber or reservoir. This is a liquid rock pool underneath the Earth's surface. Magma then flows off a pipe called the conduit. Then the magma starts to erupt. It, when it starts to erupt, it just flows down the sides of the volcano and it turns into lava. Lava then, uh, when it cools down, turns into a rock called igneous rock. Ring of fire. This is an arc of deep trenches that surround the Pacific Ocean. Some islands that are near the Ring of Fire are California, Hawaii, Japan, Indonesia, and Siberia. One of the most famous volcanoes are located in there. One of them is called Mount Fuji, which is located in Japan. In the Ring of Fire, it contains over 452 volcanoes, which is 75% of the world's most active volcanoes. Now, I will be talking about where the next volcano is most likely to erupt. Now, Oh, the next volcano is most likely to erupt, but not in the Ring of Fire, but a small island located in Italy. It is called Sicily. This is where the most active volcano in the world is located. It is called Mount Etna. Mount Etna is one of the many volcanoes that are erupted many times in a year. Just this year, it has erupted six times. In the, in, the, in the past month, it has erupted four times. It is still very hazardous, and lots of people have flown out of the city of Sicily due to the fact that it could erupt and be a big impact to the place of Sicily. This is all for now, and back to you, Regional News. Hello, Canadian Regional News. This is Brandon Singh with one of the survivors, Gina Marcella. So first of all, how are you? Um, I am good, but I do not know my village. I do not know what happened to them. I just saw a bunch of red skies and grayish clouds on my All right. How is your family? I don't know my family. I just ran away with my car or drove away. Uh, my family was, was, was back, back at the village. I, I don't know what happened to them. I am so worried about them. What did you witness when the volcano erupted? Everyone was playing and I was just wrestling with my amigo. And then suddenly the ground started rumbling. My car got unsteady and I saw a whole screen of gray with ashes falling on out of the sky. Mm -hmm. I was scared and I, I drove away as fast as I can at 200 miles per hour. Did you bring any of your valuables? No, I did not bring anything except my car. I left everything there. I was so scared that I didn't know what to do, so I just drove away. Alright, so this is Canadian Regional News with Brandon Singh and one of the survivors. Hello Regional News Canada, it's Jordan back here. And I'm going to show you how a volcano actually erupts. 
Now, this is a model of a volcano that I just made with my volcanologist. Now, I'm going to show you how an example of how it would look when it erupted. Some tools I'm going to need today are water, baking soda, and vinegar. So what we're going to do with the bottle in this volcano with almost three-fourths of it with water. So I'm going to pour it. Now I've got my vinegar here. I'm going to fill the rest with it. And now I've got my baking soda. And look, it's fizzling and it's exploding. This is exactly how a volcano would erupt. Hello everybody, this is Bob Ray Potato Green Hindu. Today we were showing that how much the volcanoes have been increasing over the past few years. As you see in this graph, like 10 years ago, there were 587 volcanoes. But if, if you see in 2000, 2009, which is pretty recent, it's been two, almost 200 higher than the previous year. Well, does this warn anyone? Well, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. This, this graph shows the most prevalent volcanoes. It's in the Ring of Fire. The Ring of Fire is a ring of deep trenches and volcanoes and also earthquakes occur here too so if you're in here if you're in this ring of fire or by it be careful thank you for the introduction Bobby now I'll be answering two of the most common questions which are what a volcano is and how it affects and the community so a volcano is a whole erupter in the planet's surface that erupts hot magma that hot magma when is considered as lava when it cools then it flows downhill and stops when it Alright, so I'll be answering the second question, which is how it affects a community. A volcano affects a community in both positive and negative ways. The positive ways are that volcanoes can be generated into electricity through human beings. They use some um, machinery. There are more negative ways. So, like, a volcano can destroy structures, buildings, roads, highways, and plenty more. The ash cloud can also be hazardous and deadly. It can make it impossible to breathe. Now I'll be talking about the three main causes of what a volcano can. So both it's environmentally, economically, and politically. Environmentally, because well, once the ash cloud erupts, it is the sum of the greenhouse effect. Economically, well, the government will need to support the people that just went through disaster with tents, food, etc. And politically, this is positive because other allied countries will try to support this country that just went through disaster. Thank you for watching and goodbye.